I know how overwhelming it can be to build your first FPV drone. I was in the same boat when I first started out and I made every mistake in the book. In this video, I'll share the key things I have learned so you can avoid the same mistakes that I made. This video is part of a series and is sponsored by T-Motor, Speedybee and Flyfish RC. When I first started fixing and building drones, I was clueless. I watched a ton of videos on YouTube before I even tried to do anything and I still managed to screw things up. I ended up ruining some of my drone parts and had to spend a ton of money replacing absolutely everything. The first thing I recommend is having the right tools for the job. I used whatever tools I had lying around the house and I even went down to the local hardware store to buy things like hex drivers and a soldering iron. What I learned is the tools from the hardware store aren't necessarily the right tools for FPV. And the problem with using the wrong tools, really like trying to hammer in a screw instead of using a drill. So what are the right tools that you need for FPV? Well, if you want to buy them individually, you can. So here is what you need. Hex drivers in the following sizes. Tweezers, a decent soldering iron, soldering iron tips, solder pig, flux, hookup wire, as well as a prop tool. Now, if you don't want to buy all of these individually, you can grab them in a kit such as the Newbie Drone Toolkit, which is what lives in my backpack. You may be wondering where you can buy all the right tools for building an FPV drone. Well, the good news is most FPV stores will have everything you need. If you can't afford it, I'd recommend getting two of each tool so you can have one set on your workbench and then another set in your backpack. Now that you have all the right tools, you'll need the right parts. Figuring out which parts to get and whether they're compatible with each other and whether they're just suitable for your specific build can be tricky. So here's how I do it. The first thing you need to do is formulate a shopping list. And here are all the components that you're going to need when building. A frame, motors, props, camera, video transmitter, video antenna, radio receiver, ESC, flight controller, and batteries. Now you have your shopping list, you need to work out what parts on the list to get. When I got started building, I experimented with different configurations and parts that just really should have never been together on the same drone. But how do you actually avoid this mistake? Well, you may have heard of R&D or research and development. I like to think of it as research and duplicate. And this is a technique that can work with any kind of drone build. And here's what I do. If I'm wanting to build a 5-inch freestyle drone, the first thing I do is research what other parts are on 5-inch bind and fly or pre-built drones, taking note of the specifications of each component. Let's break down the iFlight Nazgul Evoke. The frame is the Nazgul Evoke X frame. It uses 2207 1750KV motors with Nazgul 5-inch props. The camera is a Cadex Retel 2, which is a micro camera, and the video transmitter is the 600mW Success X Mini uses a MMCX RHCP antenna with Express LRS or Crossfire as the receiver. The ESC is the Blitz Mini 55 amp. The flight controller is the Blitz Mini F722. And for batteries, it uses 6S 1400 milliamp hour batteries. We can do the same process on a number of other pre-built five inch freestyle drones as well, such as the GEP RC Mark V, the HGLRC Sector 5, Foxy Aura 5 inch, Diatone Roma 5 inch and Joshua Bardwell's very own perfect 5 inch build. What we can see are common specifications across all 5 inch FPV freestyle drones that we should stick to when trying to build our own. For example, we all need a 5 inch freestyle frame. The motors are going to be 2207 or 2306 and around 1750 to 1850 kV with 5 inch props. Cameras can be the Cadex Retel 2, the Runcam Phoenix, or the Foxy Toothless 2. Video transmitters are 600 milliwatts to 2 watts for analog, or you've got the DJI video system. Antennas are RHCP for analog and LHCP for DJI. And the most common receivers are Express LRS or Crossfire. From an ESC specification, you're wanting 45 to 60 amps with an F722 flight controller and using batteries for success between 11 to 1300 milliamps. This process and strategy is repeatable across every kind of FPV drone, whatever you want to make, whether it's a whoop, a micro, or even a seven inch. Now that you know which parts you have to buy, how do you know they're going to be compatible? 
the most common area of incompatible parts is the flight controller and ESC. What you don't want to do is purchase a flight controller and ESC separately because most of the time they may have different mountings such as 20x20 and 30x30 and also the connector that connects the two together may not match. I find it painful and frustrating to repin the connector between the ESC and flight controller so whenever I'm buying a flight controller and ESC I always want to buy them in a combo which is also known as a stack. It just makes this part of the building process so much easier. Then you also want to check the frame to see what mounting pattern it can take. Most 5 inch frames take a 30 by 30 and a 20 by 20 mounting pattern. Then once you know the mounting patterns on your frame, it's as simple as buying a stack that has that same mounting pattern. There's also another aspect of buying parts that can add extra cost unnecessarily and it adds up really quickly. I made this mistake and I still make it today and it's caused my budget to blow out because I didn't realize this when I was planning for my build and that's shipping costs. When you buy all your components, you want to get as many of them as you can from the same retailer to save on shipping costs. There are 11 different components that go into a build, and if you have to get them from 11 different suppliers, there's the potential to add a few hundred dollars extra to your build costs if you buy them separately. Now that you have all of your tools and hopefully have ordered all of your parts, you may think it's time to jump straight in and get building. Well, this was a critical mistake that I made and it resulted in disaster. And that's not knowing how to solder correctly. I've made the mistake of trying to solder my new components onto my drone and ended up destroying not only several flight controllers, but also several ESCs in the process. And I've also made every mistake from lifting pads, bridging pads, reversing the polarity, and just really bad and janky soldering with not enough solder, too much solder, and getting it all over the place when really what I should have done is purchase a solder practice board and hone my skills first before taking a 400 degree soldering iron and molten metal to my $100 ESC. So grab yourself a solder practice board and then watch this video here where I show you how to increase your soldering skills fast. I'm Darren Allen, until next time, don't forget to send it.